we're appealing to your inner geek as we get out the blocks with the precision science of track sprinting. The sprint start is all about generating power, so we need to be very quick to leave the blocks. So you notice that sprinters will have very short staccato-like steps at the beginning of a race to try and generate as much force and the friction that they interact with the ground as the spikes touch the track surface to try and propel them forwards. When we multiply force by the amount of time that we spend applying that force, we get something that's called impulse. The greater impulse that we can then generate will mean that we can help to propel our centre of gravity forwards out the blocks as quickly as we possibly can. From a biomechanics point of view, we need pieces of kit that will help us slow down that technique so we can understand what's happening at every foot contact. We'll use things like three-dimensional motion capture to help us monitor the movements of the arms and the legs. And we'll also use things like force transducers to try and help us understand the forces under the feet that are generated during the sprint start. Not only is it important getting out of the blocks, but you'll see them always keeping their head down to maintain peak velocity. Once peak velocity is hit, you start to see the gaze and the eyes go up towards the finish line, and that's where they try to maintain that speed. When you see these guys, you can see that they're fast and explosive and have got very defined muscles. The key nutrient for a sprinter is going to be about protein. Spread protein over the day and around the training sessions that you do so that it's available for recovery and building the new protein that you've stimulated the body to produce because of the training session, and then to keep feeding it over the day so that you can keep boosting that protein synthetic response. In sprinting, your fast twitch muscle fibers, we call the fast glycolytic, are fast to contract, but unfortunately fast to fatigue. So we know that you can only do a high intensity for a short period of time. That's why there is an inverse relationship to intensity and duration. Sprinters do quite short sessions of very high intensity exercise, and they're really relying on carbohydrate and some other cellular fuels, timing it so that it's there for those very high intensity sessions where you want to work at very high explosive use of carbohydrate.